Thank you, Lord. Somebody say the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Second Chronicles 20, verse 16. But that don't mean we don't fight the good fight of faith. According to 1 Timothy 6, 12. We fight because we know it's won. In heavenly armor we enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us shall stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory and honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing. Because that's how the battle belongs to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, God told Jehoshaphat, some might say king of praise, king of Judah. Judah means praise. He said, look, this multitude that's coming against you, he said, don't fear them. He said, because the battle you're about to enter, this battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Now, that don't mean the battle stopped. They had to fight the battle, but God just let them know it's not yours. You're going to have to fight in it, but I'll go ahead and assure you it's not yours. Amen. Meaning it belongs to me. And so before the fight ever begins, it's already been fixed in your favor and you win. Wow. Who wouldn't want to fight in that kind of battle? Don't be afraid of this enemy. It's kind of like in, in, in Numbers, I believe it is, Numbers 14, amen, where Caleb and Joshua, you know, were sent by Moses to spy out the, the promised land. They went into the promised land. And, and, and when they come back, they brought report. They said, there's giants there. Amen. How many you understand if there's bigger blessings, they're going to be bigger messings. They're going to be enemies bigger. Amen. A great and effectual door is open unto you, but there are many bigger adversaries, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9. So they brought a good report back and said, yeah. Yeah, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Somebody say, but somebody's got to milk the cow and smell the cow. Yeah, bigger blessings, bigger messings. Come on, Proverbs 14 and verses 4, the Bible said, where no ox is in the crib, the crib is clean. But where the ox is, by the ox comes much blessing. Simply said, that's Proverbs 14 and 14, or Proverbs 14 verses 4. So this is the wisdom from that scripture. You can have a crib, that means you can have a pen and ain't got no bull in the pen. Literally. No bull in the pen. If there's no bull in the pen, there's no bull in the pen. In other words, you got an empty crib. There's no animal. There's no animal in that stall. Somebody shout, it's clean. There ain't no mess there. But somebody say, if you got an animal in there, the ox in there, the bull in there, by that ox or that bull comes great blessing. Amen. That's how they made their living back then. That was like the farmer's tractor. Amen. Praise God. So God says you can have a clean crib with no blessing or you can have an occupied pen with a bull and there'd be a whole lot of messing. You got to shovel through, but you're not going to have one without the other. Somebody say, you ain't going to have a lot of blessing without a lot of messing. There's going to be some mess. To, whew, shovel through. Come on, somebody. But by the ox and his strength, that bull's strength comes great blessing. Amen. I call it the bull blessing. It involves a lot of stinking, a lot of messing. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Well, the land's flowing with milk and honey. Somebody's got to get beast done. The grapes there, they brought men, the grapes are big. Come on, somebody. Why? Because the ones that's been eating them are big too. That's the land is full of giants. And Joshua and Caleb say, listen, listen what they said. They said in verses nine, I believe in Numbers 14, they said they're food for us. Who are the giants, the big problems? He said, we feed off of it. We feed off of that. We feed off of the fight. Praise God. In other words, we don't fear to fight. We feed off of it. And here's what we feed in faith off of. Hey Amen. That if God said it was ours, it's ours. It don't mean we're just going to walk into the promised land and get all the blessings. They're just going to just come to us without us fighting. But why wouldn't we fight if God said he's already went before us and he's with us? My God, we can't lose. Hey Amen. Praise God. We're on the winning side. So why wouldn't a fight? 
Praise God. Amen. Somebody say, it's worth the fight. Amen. A lot of times, people's too, do, do, doing too much flighting instead of fighting. Somebody say, it ain't time to flight. It's time to fight. And so it's a good fight of faith. According to 1 Timothy 6 and 12, somebody say the reason it's a good fight is because the fight's already been won. God says it ain't your battle. Amen. A lot of times people read 2 Chronicles 20 verse 16 and said the battle's not yours, it belongs to the Lord. They immediately think there's no battle. Mm -mm, the battle is real. The battle belongs to the Lord. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 16. But the battle belonging to the Lord doesn't mean we're not required to fight in that battle. Amen. But Numbers 14 and 9, Caleb and Joshua said, there's big grapes over there. But that's why the reason the grapes are big is because the people eating them are big. There's giants there. It ain't going to be easy, people. There's going to be milk flowing. But somebody's got to do some milking, smelling the cow, the mess. Come on, somebody. There's going to be a lot of honey there flowing. But somebody's going to get bee stung. Somebody say there's going to be fights. There are going to be battles. Amen. But just know this one thing. They are food for us. That's what Joshua and Caleb said. All the other evil reporters said we got big giants. We're like grasshoppers in their eyes. How in the world can they know how the giant sees us? Amen. But that's what they were saying. They said we're like grasshoppers in their eyes and in our own eyes. They had a grasshopper mentality. No wonder they just hop from one church to another. Anyhow, don't want me to get there. Hallelujah just hopping around praise God amen we can't do nothing that them that's too big of a giant too big of problems there but God says I done gave you the land I done promised it to you why wouldn't you fight for something I already promised you come on now. hallelujah again that's why numbers 14 and 9 says they're food for us they're bread for us Caleb and Joshua said who are the giants the problems the fights the battle in other words they fed off the fight they didn't fear the fight they fed off of it. They didn't do some flighting. They did some fighting. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, we shouldn't be afraid to fight because the battle is not ours to begin with. It belongs to the Lord. Second Chronicles 20 verse 16. And then he told them, amen, glory to God. He told them to set themselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with them. Amen. And if you'll study Second Chronicles 20, when God gave Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, king of praise, because Judah means praise, this very message, this battle plan, he said, now tell all your men of war to step to the back of the line and get all your worshipers, your praisers. Come on, somebody. Let them come out in front of the line and let them be on the front line and let them start marching toward the enemy's camp. Hallelujah. And singing a song saying the mercy of the Lord endureth forever and let everybody join in singing because your weapon's going to be my worship. Amen. And before they could get to the enemy's camp, God had done sand ambushments into the enemy's camp. Amen. And they helped destroy one another. And when God's people showed up there just praising and somebody shout a bunch of crazy people. Amen. Just praising God. Brother Rob, when they got there, all they did is just pick up the spoil. They didn't have to kill anybody. They didn't have to do a lot of fighting. Amen. They just began to get blessed. Amen. Why? Somebody shout because when the battle's God's, that means I praise him. Somebody say when I praise him, I'm turning the battle over to him. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say when it's not my battle, I'll praise him. Oh, but when it's your battle and you doing all the fighting alone you won't have a shout you won't have a praise but somebody say when God tells you it's his battle he's telling you praise me praise me praise me praise me David said in Psalms chapter 18 in verses uh, I believe it's uh, 34 it is thank you Holy Ghost he said he teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight now in David's day that was literally the handle on his sword or the spear in his hand but somebody say for us, he don't teach our fingers to fight and our hands to war because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4. So here's how I fight with my hands. Come on, somebody. <laughs> here's how I fight with my fingers. This is how I wore a good warfare. Come on, somebody. This is how I handle it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray. We'll just stop and take a praise break. Somebody say, welcome to 2023, the year to go crazy. Come on, because the battle's not ours. It belongs to the Lord. 
Hallelujah. That's why I had to sing that song tonight. Hallelujah. When your enemy presses in hard, do not fear. Somebody say, the battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend. Your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And that's why I said we sing glory honor, power and strength to the Lord and God we give you praise right now we just take our praise break because we thank you Lord Jesus oh yeah I'm reminded of Psalm 76 and 1 it said in Judah somebody saying praise God is known and in verses 3, 2 verses later amen after he said in praise or in Judah God is known he said I'll break the bow and I'll break the arrow, I'll break the spear and the sword and I'll break the battle. Psalm 76 verses 3. Somebody shout in praise. In Judah, God makes himself known. And somebody say in praise. Because praise is a place. Somebody shout there. He breaks the battle. There he breaks the arrow and the bow of the enemy. There he breaks the sword and the spear of our adversary. Somebody say arrows that are broke can't be shot bows that are broke can't be used to shoot a broke arrow broke swords somebody say get a vision of it in 2023 broke arrows broke swords broke shields broke bags of the enemy somebody shout it send praise that we break the battle the battle gets broke oh yes hallelujah thank you holy ghost God, we give you praise. I pursued my enemies and did overtake them. Psalms 18, 37. Oh, yeah. Went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what it stole from me. Yes, I took back what it stole from me. Oh, I took back what it stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what it stole from me. He's under my feet, yeah, he's under my feet. He's under my feet, yeah, he's under my feet. He's under my feet, yeah, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Yeah, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what it stole from me. Yes, I took back. Oh, I took back what it stole from me. Yeah, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what it stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet, yeah, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, he's under my feet, Satan is under my feet.